Hey, welcome back. Quick, get inside, it's dangerous out there. You're just in time to see the most terrifying thing from Attack on Titan. This brutal story about massive walls protecting the last of humanity was a lie. The walls were never a defense, they were a weapon. Buried within the hardened stone surface are colossal titans. An entire army of colossal titans. They rest here dormant, waiting to be awakened with a single mission. To destroy the world. In this video, you're getting a glimpse of the apocalypse. What if the rumbling was real? Again, I'll try my best to avoid story spoilers like the last time I made a video about Attack on Titan, but with the conclusion of the anime, I just have to talk about the rumbling. I won't mention any details, so don't worry if you're not caught up. I mean, not all of us have made it to season four, part three, episode two, chapter five. But regardless, I think it's time for us to see some fish bones. That's the nickname I've given to the largest and most bizarre titan in the entire series. Consisting almost entirely of exposed bones, this giant ribcage titan measures over a kilometer in length, with the spines on its back reaching 650 meters tall. Simply put, this titan towers over most modern city skyscrapers, though it would still be shorter than the tallest building in the world. Although I have no idea how the heck this thing is supposed to even move. I mean, does it just float around like a blimp? Does it crawl along on its bones like the legs of a centipede? Or what if it just stood up on the... Wait, are those legs? Look at those legs! Just when I thought this titan couldn't get more bizarre, somehow this takes it there. So yeah, perhaps it's a good call not having it stand up like this. <laughs> the main thing to know about this monstrosity is that it controls the army of titans that are waiting within the walls. According to legend, the walls were formed from countless colossal titans standing shoulder to shoulder. Using a special hardening ability to grow the walls around them, they encased themselves inside. However, once awoken, the walls would crumble and reveal a literal clone army of the single most dangerous titan. It's a force capable of destroying the entire world without having to do more than just walk. See, unlike the threat of traditional weapons like guns or bombs, this weapon is an unstoppable tidal wave that will hydraulic press the entire world until it's flat. So how many wall titans make up this force? The show never gives us a legit answer, but fortunately they did leave enough breadcrumbs for us to figure out because yeah, I did the math. In order to calculate the scale of the rumbling, we need two things, the size of the walls and the titans inside. Now, I always assumed that the wall titans were the same size as the colossal titan, but there's a big problem with that assumption. The colossal titan is taller than the wall. I mean, this guy looming above the wall is one of the most iconic images from the story. How is he supposed to fit inside? That's what she said. <laughs> One possible answer is that the wall titans are just shorter, but there's actually some evidence from season one suggesting they're not. There's a story of a miner who tried to tunnel beneath the wall but hit bedrock about 10 meters down, implying that maybe he just hit the hardened feetsies of the wall titans themselves. So all right then, I guess that means the wall titans are 60 meters tall, 20 meters wide, and buried at least 10 meters down. This actually makes a lot of sense because any wall is gonna need a solid foundation so it doesn't just fall over. But how big are these walls? They reside on the island of Paradis, but if you flip the map, it looks just like Madagascar, with the east coast of Africa resembling Marley. This suggests that the world of Attack on Titan is simply a mirror version of Earth, but the numbers tell a different story. Episode one revealed the radius of the three walls surrounding humanity, meaning the total area within the walls is 723,000 square kilometers. Is that a lot? Not only is that bigger than Madagascar, but it's bigger than Texas! Texas. This little devil island is so much bigger than any of us realize. If we cut up the walls and string them together into a line, they'd be about 7,000 kilometers long. That's the distance from Las Vegas to New York City and back. That is immense, but let's not forget that the Great Wall of China is three times longer than that. It's also real, so you know, ain't no titans waiting in there. Right? Okay, it's time to answer the big question. How many titans are in the walls? 350,000. This number alone is colossal and would make it the 16th largest army in the world if they were normal sized, but they're not. They're colossal titans. Just one is already the most dangerous creature in the entire world. The danger is mainly just from their feet because all they need to do is step on you with their tremendous weight. I calculated that the weight of each of these titans is six million kilograms. That's the same weight as 52 blue whales, but stuffed inside a creature that walks on two legs. When walking, we apply anywhere from like one and a half to three times our own body weight into the force of each step. 
of demolition. Look at the size of this. Even the concrete of the road doesn't stand a chance, despite having a lot of strength. The ground underneath the road gives way, causing the brittle concrete to flex and break apart. Phew, that was a close one, but fortunately, he didn't step on me. Oh no. Now obviously your feet don't cover all the ground when walking, but with enough people around, every square inch sees the bottom of someone's foot. 350,000 pairs of feet is a lot, but in order to leave no ground unstomped, the marching titans would need to be multiple rows deep. They need to walk in a line so that the ground can get completely flattened by all of the footsteps. So how many would it take? After scaling down a titan to my height and laser cutting its footprint into a stamp, <laughs> I have Titan feet. I set out to walk along this stretch of dirt until it was fully stomped down. Okay, now I'm gonna go do it again. And to my surprise, it only took seven passes to completely stomp it all, which means that the marching formation only needs a column of seven Titans to squash the whole world. And the rumbling itself would be at least like a thousand kilometers wide. It's a friggin' mega meter line of pure destruction. They would have to comb across the world going back and forth like a lawnmower. Perhaps there'd even be some overlap so they don't end up with little gaps in the annihilation, you know? But the story takes place in an early industrial era where there aren't large scale cities or buildings. 60 meter Titans are literally the biggest things around, but that's not the case in a modern city. The main point I made about the Colossal Titan in my first video was that it's just not as big as you might expect, because compared to a modern city, it's really not. You could hide dozens of Colossal Titans inside New York City because most of the buildings in Manhattan are significantly taller than them. In the modern world, 60 meters just isn't all that big anymore, and Wait, wait, hold up! Is that what I think it is? Okay, I guess not. Apparently it's just a train station, but come on! It's even on a system called The Path. Eh? Eh? No? Oh. Remember the Godzilla movie that came out in 98 starring Ferris Bueller? That's a lot of fish. This Scylla stands only slightly taller than the Colossal Titan at 70 meters tall, but it wrecked New York City. Most buildings can withstand things like earthquakes, but bump a giant shoulder into it and there's no way that building's not getting condemned. And that's not even mentioning how much damage the military ended up doing to the city. <laughs> The Titans certainly make much easier targets than a dodging lizard, but there's still one more trick up the Titans' muscly sleeves. They can emit supercritical steam. We're talking about steam that is so hot, it can ignite cloth on fire! Like six or seven hundred degrees hot. So not only are these Titans stomping everything to a pulp, but they're also burning it all as well. Steam might not be able to get hot enough to melt steel beams. <clears throat> But it doesn't have to. The tremendous amount of heat generated by these titans would easily be enough to destroy a city. I mean, the windows would melt. Even the concrete of the buildings would be damaged from the heat. I mean, just look at how a simple pallet fire in Los Angeles destroyed a highway. Traffic has been awful. Which begs the question, if the rumbling were to happen in the real world today, could we resist? Could we fight back and win? To kill a titan, you have to destroy the nape of its neck. And over the course of the show, the characters innovate new ways to do this, from swords and omnidirectional movement gear to these things called thunder spears. Fast forward to our reality, and we have guided missiles, fighter jets, and even freaking nuclear bombs. So yeah, I think we could win. In fact, I dare say that the rumbling is less dangerous to us than we are to ourselves. It's the consolidation of power that's the real danger. And I think that's why I still find the concept of the rumbling so haunting. One of the themes of Attack on Titan is inevitability. The idea that we as humans cannot change our nature and are therefore powerless to change our future. But if that's true, then where do we go from here? How do we keep moving forward if what we're moving toward is this? Is it possible to change a story that's already been written? Is it pointless to even try? No. I don't believe in a deterministic universe. The future is ours to write. Thank you so 
much for watching. This was a huge labor of love, and I hope you like it as much as I'm proud of it. If you want to keep watching some more Attack on Titan content, guess what? We have a whole other scale of Attack on Titan video right here for your enjoyment and pleasure. That's a phrase. This was a really fun year of making videos, and I'm looking forward to making some more next year. So, see ya.